Contrary to what many popular skeptical commentators may say, most scholars regard this passage as genuine once certain Christian interpolations are removed. Well, the word interpolation refers to any instance when in the copying of a document by hand, someone has added in something that was not previously in the text. Uh, some people would refer to that as a form of forgery, but there's a difference between an interpolation and a forgery. A forgery is something done with some sort of malice or ill intent. An interpolation may or may not be done with that kind of intent. A forgery is a type of interpolation, but not all interpolations are forgeries. All ancient writings, and even those up until the medieval era, uh, up until the time of William Shakespeare, all have some kind of errors or mistakes in copying. They may be interpolations, they may simply be clerical errors of some sort, but every ancient writing has problems of some kind. There are no copies of Josephus that do not have at least some mention of Jesus in them. Now, there are some variations, for example, in an Arabic translation that do not have some of the suspicious phrases that we think are interpolated. But there are absolutely no copies of Josephus that are completely missing references to Jesus. When looking into this matter, uh, I found a work by Louis Feldman, who is probably today's leading scholar on Josephus. And Feldman did a survey of views on this subject. And the people who think it is a forgery versus those who think it is entirely genuine runs in something of a bell curve. You have a small number who believe that it is entirely a forgery and a very small number who believe that it is an entirely genuine passage. The most people believe that it is a genuine passage with just some interpolations. Now the passage as we have it currently received reads as follows. Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ, and when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsake him. For he appeared to them alive again the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these and ten thousand other wonderful things concerning him and the tribe of Christians so named from him are not extinct of this day. The portions that are considered most suspicious are the ones that seem to make Josephus sound like a Christian. Uh, for example, he says, he was the Christ, which is not something that we would expect Josephus as a loyal Jew to say. Now, if we take out the portions that are considered most suspicious, here's what we are left with. Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsake him. And the tribe of Christians so named from him are not extinct to this day. Now there's a shorter passage in Josephus about Jesus that comes from a section that is about James, the brother of Jesus. In the context of this passage, James has just been executed, and Josephus ref briefly refers to James as the brother of Jesus, the so-called Christ. It must be taken into consideration that uh, so much ancient literature has been lost, and that could have been due to destruction, whether by Christians or indeed by pagans, or simply by works being neglected and not being copied any further. And it is amazing that we do have what we have about Jesus in Josephus, in Tacitus, and in other writings.